All right, so you've learned a little bit about the features of ketamine, what it's doing in the brain, what it feels like to be on ketamine. But in this video, we're talking about more than just the antidepressant effects of ketamine. We're talking about ketamine-assisted therapy. So how does ketamine assist the therapy process, okay? Imagine this, imagine you've been in therapy for a while for depression, and your therapist has helped you develop some awareness around some of the thinking patterns that are leading to a depressed episode or a depressed mood, and you get it, right? You're aware that some of these thinking patterns aren't super helpful and they're self-defeating. But even though you get it, you're still having a hard time making some durable changes. These beliefs are sticky. So your therapist would leverage the effect, this sort of relaxing and loosening effect that ketamine has on the mind. They would leverage those effects to help enhance or assist the psychotherapy process. And this process is usually broken down into three different phases. There's the preparation phase, there's the actual medicine experience phase, the dosing session as we call it, and then there's the integration phase. Let's take each of those phases in turn and describe what that's like and how you can get the most out of each one of those phases. You know your therapist and they're gonna get to know you. They're gonna ask you questions, they're gonna try to get a sense of what's been going on with this particular mental health challenge what you've done to try to address that challenge, what has worked, what hasn't worked. And then depending on the particular theoretical orientation of the therapist, you might focus on some things more than others. But generally speaking, that's gonna feel just about like any kind of early therapy experience, like early experience with a new therapist. Then the therapist is gonna to try to prepare you specifically for the ketamine experience. You'll receive some education, kind of like you're getting in this video, about what to expect. And you're gonna talk about your desired treatment outcome. So you're gonna set some goals. But most importantly, with ketamine-assisted therapy, specifically, you're gonna set intentions for each medicine session. And intentions are, I like to think of them as a loosely held hope. This is something that you wanna get out of the medicine experience that's in service of your greater treatment goals. And I say loosely held because one of the things we've noticed is that uh, sometimes these ketamine experiences, like other psychedelics, tend to go the direction they're just gonna go. And if you try to exert too much control and force the experience or maybe resist what's showing up, that can lead to a kind of unpleasant experience. So while we set specific intentions, there's general counsel, general advice that goes something like this. If you encounter something that's disturbing or distressing or difficult, first meet it with curiosity, open up to it. Ask, what is this doing in my mind? Why might I be experiencing this at this moment? Other words like surrender, or allow, or let go, or in and through can be instructive and helpful uh, to practice and develop during preparation so that when the time comes during the dosing session, you've got those strategies in mind and in hand to use to navigate your experience. So beyond those general navigation instructions, like I said, you and your therapist are gonna try to come up with a specific intention or a loosely held hope. And we have a little formula that we like to use to help construct a useful intention. We wanna keep it simple. We don't want our intentions to be you know, giant paragraphs that we have to remember. We want them to be simple and memorable so they can act as an anchor or a rudder for your ketamine journey. So this formula is comprised as such. First, we start with uh, a verb like help me or teach me or show me. And then we combine it with an essential quality or an emotion or something you know, related to our treatment outcomes. So let's say you've been struggling with depression, you might say something like, help me find joy, or teach me how to let go of these sticky beliefs. Remember that it's okay for your intention to change, even between your final preparation session and the morning of your dosing session. We want it to be meaningful and important to you, so this is gonna be a collaborative process with you and your therapist. In addition to setting a good intention, here is a few other things you can do to get the most out of the preparation phase. This falls into three categories, physical preparation, mental preparation, and logistical preparation. We'll start with physical. So in the days leading up to your dosing session, it's important that you do your best to take care of your body. So that means getting as much restful sleep as possible, nourishing your body with healthy food, staying hydrated, exercising, spending time in nature, getting some body work done, if that's a thing that you like. Maybe spending some time in a sauna or a cold plunge. 
If you've been prescribed any medications, it's important that you take them as prescribed, but talk to your prescribing provider about whether or not any of those medications should be stopped on the day of your dosing session. The morning of your dosing session, it's important that you don't eat anything. We want you to have an empty stomach coming in. You can hydrate, but you know, for at least three to four hours leading up to your dosing session, don't eat anything. The reason we suggest that is that sometimes ketamine leads to some, can cause some nausea for some people. We often administer an anti-nausea medication in conjunction with the ketamine to counteract that, but it's best that you come in with an empty stomach. Mental preparation. So in addition to the intention setting process, it's important that you take care of your mind. So rest your mind, try to avoid uh, overstimulation, especially from media. We like to suggest people go on a social media diet. Let's not try to inflame the mind uh, with things that you can get from things like, you know, places like TikTok and Instagram or Reddit. So, you know, protect your mind. Try to be around people that are supportive if you have control over such a thing. If you have a meditation or a prayer practice, really engage with that practice. If you don't have a meditation practice, now might be a good time to start. If it's available to you, you might seek what I, what I call sacred solitude. This isn't necessarily isolation, but this is time on your own to reflect and to rest from what might, uh, what might otherwise be an overly stimulating life. Mental preparation phase is a great time for self-reflection too. So you might wanna journal or do voice memos as you reflect on this upcoming medicine experience. Logistical preparation. Your therapist will go over this with you, but you know, come dressed in comfortable clothing. You might bring any comfort items that you really enjoy. So a blanket of your own, a pillow of your own, an object that brings you comfort. Um, bring your own water bottle if that's something that you want. It's important that you clear your schedule for the day. Some people feel a little tired after, or maybe even a little disoriented, maybe even a bit of a headache after their dosing session. So it's important that you have time to rest the day of your dosing session. It's also important that somebody drives you to and takes you home from your dosing session. You're not gonna be in any condition to drive. So make sure that that person is not somebody that is gonna grill you about your ketamine experience. You're welcome to share as much or as little of your experience with anybody. So just make sure that this is a person that you feel safe with. Thank you.